so here the next derivation is derivation of tr okay that is rise time okay so now here in this plot we can see that this is the rise time here okay this region is called as the rise time so here this is the rise time tr where uh, it is uh, going uh, above the uh, given level that is given unit step that is it is going above one so where it in which point it's going above one that point from the origin we can say that it's the point of tr okay yeah so for derivation of tr again what we need to be taking is the output response c of t we need to be taking at t is equal to tr okay that is equal to one since uh, the tr is uh, till uh, its range is only from here to here so we can say that from zero to one so we can directly we can write the value of uh, c of t is equal to one where the value of t is equal to tr so again now uh, uh, obtain uh, substitute the value of c of t that is 1 minus e to the power zeta omega n t in place of t substitute it as tr divided by square root of 1 minus zeta square into sine omega d tr plus theta is equal to 1 okay so now again this 1 and 1 we can cancel or we can take this 1 to other side so that would be 1 minus 1 so here we would be getting 0 that is minus e to the power zeta omega n tr divided by square root of 1 minus zeta square sine omega d tr plus theta is equal to 0 okay so this equation would be getting satisfied when sin omega d tr is equal to 0 since we, these two terms are getting multiplied again okay so that's why any one of the terms should be equal to 0 but here in this case uh, e to the power zeta omega n we have here but this omega n is not equal to 0 right since it is the natural frequency of oscillation so that's why this term would be should be equal to 0 so that's why sin omega d tr equal to 0 okay sin omega d tr plus theta is equal to 0 but in generally we can say that we have one more trigonometric identity that is sin n pi okay sin of n pi is equal to 0 okay where the value of n goes from 1 to up to infinity okay now always the value of sin n pi is equal to 0 but in place of n pi we have omega d tr plus theta so that is omega d tr plus theta is equal to n pi but here the value of n is equal to 1 since we are considering for a first overshoot that is the first response we are considering so that's why we can take the value of n as 1 so therefore omega d tr plus theta is equal to pi so therefore the value of tr we are getting it as pi so this plus theta if you take it to other side it would be minus theta divided by omega d so this is our expression for rise time that is pi minus theta divided by omega d so this was all about the derivation of tr so hello everyone So welcome to this new session. So in the last session we have solved two problems right. So today we are going to continue with those problems only okay. So if you are if you if those who have not referred it you can refer it down in the previous video. So let's continue with them. So it's the third question. So the question is find all the time domain specifications for the unity feedback control system whose open loop transfer function that is OLTF is given by g of s is equal to. 25 in divided by s into s plus 5 so in this question again the same thing all the time domain specifications all the five time domain specification we need to be finding out okay but the given data is they have given only the value of g of s and they have mentioned it as unity feedback so that's why our uh, transfer function which we are writing is c of s by r of s is equal to g of s divided by 1 plus g of s into h of s right where the value of h of s is equal to one because they have mentioned it as unity feedback so c of s by r of s is equal to the value of g of s is 25 divided by so multiply this so s square plus 5s divided by 1 plus 25 divided by s square plus 5s so if we solve this what we will be getting since the h of s is equal to 1 so into 1 so yeah s square plus 5s divided by take the lcm s square plus 5s plus 25 divided by s square plus 5s so s square plus 5s would be getting cancelled so our final c of s by r of s is equal to 25 divided by s square plus 5s plus 25 okay so this is the value of c of s by r of s again the same thing compare it with the general form 
that is omega n square divided by s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square so consider the denominator part okay so in the denominator part in place of omega n square we have 25 so omega n is equal to square root of 25 so our omega n we are getting it as square root of 25 is 5 so 5 radian per second okay same thing coefficient of s is 2 zeta omega n is equal to 5 here so zeta which we are getting is 5 divided by 2 omega n okay so zeta is equal to 5 divided by 2 into 5 okay so 5 and 5 gets cancelled so 1 by 2 is 0 0.5 so the value of zeta is 0.5 okay so here we have found the values of omega n and zeta okay so now again the same thing we have the data of omega n and zeta right so one by one find all the time domain specification that is first is td that is the delay time the formula is 1 plus 0.7 zeta divided by omega n that is 1 plus 0 0.7 into the value of zeta is 0 0.5 divided by 5 so after solving this the answer which you are getting is 0 0.27 seconds okay so this is the value of td so the second time domain specification is tr the formula is pi minus theta by omega d okay again in this case we need to be finding the value of theta as well as omega d so first thing find the value of omega d that is the formula is omega d is equal to omega n into square root of 1 minus theta square so omega d is equal to omega n is 5 square root of 1 minus 0.5 square if we solve this the answer of omega d we are getting it as 4.33 radian per second okay so this is the value of omega d so similarly find the value of theta the formula is tan inverse of square root of 1 minus zeta square divided by zeta so theta is tan inverse of square root of 1 minus 0.5 the whole square divided by 0.5 so if we solve this we need to be keeping this in radian mode okay i have told you in the previous video also if you want to find the value of theta it should not be in degree it should always be in radians so in the calculator set the uh, uh, degree uh, converted the degree mode into the radian mode so the answer here we are getting is 1.047 radians okay so then again substitute the value of uh, theta and omega d in this equation and find the value of tr so the value of pi is 3.14 minus theta is 1.047 divided by omega d is uh, 4.33 so if we solve this the value of tr we are getting it as 0.48 seconds okay so this is the value of tr so the next thing is tp the formula is simple for pi by omega d the value of tp so tp is equal to pi the value of pi is 3.14 divided by omega d is 4.33 so 3.14 divided by 4.33 the answer is 0 0.725 seconds okay so the fourth uh, time domain specification is np that is the p core shoot the formula is e to the power minus pi zeta divided by square root of 1 minus zeta square so e to the power minus 3.14 the value of zeta is 0 0.5 divided by square root of 1 minus 0.5 square so the after solving the answer of mp which we are getting is 0 0.163 okay so if you want to convert it into percentage multiply by 100 so percentage mp we are getting it as 16.3 percent okay the percentage value so the last time domain specification is ts the settling time the formula is 4 by zeta omega n that is 4 by the value of zeta is 0 0.5 into 5 that is 4 by 2.5 the the value of 4 by 2.5 is 1.6 seconds okay so yeah so this is 0 0.25 okay 4 by 0 0.25 the answer is 1.6 seconds so this is this was the first problem very simple problem so now what is the steady state error okay so difference between the desired and the actual output at infinite time or at steady state okay that is this steady state is represented as e suffix ss okay 
e suffix ss and the formula is limit t tending to infinity r of t minus c of t where r of t is the desired output and c of t is the actual output okay yeah so this is a, this is the basic definition of the steady state error here okay so you can see one uh, example plot here where i have drawn one uh, uh, graph and i have drawn this response where this is the transient state where the output is having a sudden change and after some time it would reach its steady state that is it reaches to constant and so this part is the steady state and here is the steady state error okay in this part so that's why so this is our basic plot in, to, in order to our uh, what to say represent uh, transient state as well as steady state so now let's see the effect of input on steady state error that is static error coefficient method okay so these uh, small small derivations are very important not derivations these are just the concepts okay so now let's consider a system having open loop transfer function g of s into h of s and excited by excited by there are three conditions that is reference input is step of magnitude that is reference input i have told you right r of s is the reference input so is uh, here in this case the reference reference input is given as step okay and for step function in uh, for, uh, laplace domain we represent it as a by s so let's uh, uh, consider r of s is equal to a by s and now let's write the formula for uh, steady state error that is limit uh, s tending to zero right s into uh, r of s into uh, r of s divided by 1 plus g of s into h of s which you have derived just now okay so now in place of r of s write a by s so we can cancel this s s out so the remaining term is uh, ess is equal to limit s tending to 0 a divided by 1 plus g of s into h of s okay also now ess is equal to a divided by where uh, the uh, wherever the transfer function is there so apply the limits there so 1 plus limit s tending to 0 g of s into h of s okay so now where this part here limit s tending to 0 g of s into h of s is generally represented as kp okay so please don't forget this so in whenever we are applying reference input step of magnitude so whenever uh, the expression of in steady state error we get this term limit s tending to 0 g of s into h of s so whenever we get this that is equal to kp okay that is called as positional error coefficient okay so now in place of this uh, represent it as kp so finally our uh, steady state error ess whenever uh, for the case of uh, step input we get it as a divided by 1 plus kp where kp is called as positional error coefficient okay yeah so now quickly let's get to the second condition that is reference input is ramp of magnitude a okay yeah so this is a typical ramp signal and this in this ramp signal we are getting the desired output okay yeah so here the value of r of s here we are taking it as a by s square in case of ramp okay in a frequency domain or a laplace domain so same thing write the steady state error formula uh, in place of uh, r of s substitute a by s square one s would be getting cancelled and we would be remaining in the numerator as a by s okay divided by one plus g of s into h of s so steady state error ess is equal to limit s tending to zero a divided by this s i'm bringing it to the denominator okay s into uh, uh, when you bring this uh, uh, this s to the denominator this would be multiplied so s into one plus g of s into h of s okay that is a divided by s plus s into g of s into h of s since the limit is uh, tending to zero apply that so therefore the value of s here is zero and whatever uh, term which we are uh, remaining here in the denominator that is s into g of s into h of s when you apply limit to that case so that is limit s tending to zero s into g of s into h of s is represented as kv okay and this kv is called as velocity error coefficient okay so for kp we are uh, uh, writing only g of s into h of s for kv we are multiplying one s term that is s into g of s into h of s okay so this is the value of kv okay so now here uh, this s is zero so our steady state error ess is equal to a divided by kv okay yeah where kv is the velocity error coefficient uh, which we get when we apply the signal of ramp okay yeah so therefore whenever ramp input is applied kv will control the steady state okay so now our final uh, input that is parabolic input of magnitude a where the r of s value we are taking it as a t square by 2 so whenever we are representing this in the 
frequency domain or uh, Laplace domain we are getting it as a by s, s cube when we replace it by Laplace domain so the, the same thing write the steady state as a formula in place of r of s write a by s cube one s would be getting cancelled so our re remaining term is uh, limit s tending to 0 a by s square divided by 1 plus g of s into h of s so this bring s square to the uh, denominator and it gets multiplied with this term and it would be s square plus s square into g of s into h of s where again apply the limit that is s tending to 0 so this uh, term would be equal to 0 and where this uh, or what to say uh, k uh, s square into g of s into h of s when you applied the limit to that s tending to zero we would be getting k a okay and this k a is called as acceleration error coefficient okay where this uh, where in this case we are uh, multiplying the transfer function open loop transfer function by s square okay so in velocity error coefficient we multiplied by s so in positional error coefficient we have not multiplied any term that is only g of s into h of s so here in from this case we are getting the formula for k a okay so now when we put uh, this uh, k a here the final uh, steady state error we are which we are getting is ess is equal to a divided by k a, okay this is for parabolic so now again uh, 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 by uh, getting all this formula i have just made a table in order to ma make you clear about the concept because these formulas are very important when we are solving problems that is error coefficient table so i have made a list of static error coefficients and its uh, steady state errors okay kp is equal to limit s tending to 0 g of s into h of s okay in this case the value of steady state error which we are getting is a divided by 1 plus kp right and also kb that is the velocity error coefficient limit as tending to 0 s into g of s into h of s so in this case our steady state error which we are getting is a by kb and also ka which is the acceleration error coefficient its formula is limit as tending to 0 s square into g of s into h of s and in, in this case the steady state error which we are getting is a divided by ka so please uh, go through this table and uh, get uh, thorough with these formulas so that's all for this session hope you uh, understood the concept and uh, in next class also i am going to continue with some of the theory and after that we will be solving few problems okay so that's all we'll see you in the next video thank you